Hello everyone, Dan here from the Next Tissue Podcast. On today's video, we'll be doing a review for Hidden Strike. Uh, that's a new film from 2023 uh, with a runtime of an hour and 42 minutes. Um, I'm not even going to tell you the Rotten Tomatoes score because they are terrible. Uh, the main reason I wanted to watch this movie and check it out is because in the poster, I saw that it was John Cena and Jackie Chan teaming up. So uh, that's a combo that I've never seen. And that's the reason I watched this film. And since I watched it, uh, I figured I might as well do a review video so you guys can know what you're getting into. Uh, so when a group of international rebels target a massive oil refinery in Iraq, a private Chinese security team led by Commander Liu volunteers to escort nearly 500 civilians to safety in Iraq's green zone to get there. They must travel via bus along one of the most dangerous roads in the world. On the way, they're attacked by a team of mercenaries, including decorated U.S. veteran Chris. Uh, initially reluctant to take on the job, Chris accepts the offer after finding out the exorbitant, exorbitant cost of restoring water to the Iraqi village where he lives. As Lou and Chris find out what's re who's really behind the oil refinery heist, the two join forces to save lives and kick ass. This is directed by Scott Wow, uh, written by Arash Amel, uh, and as I mentioned, stars John Cena as Chris Van Horn, Jackie Chan as Commander Liu Feng, uh, Pilu Asbe as Owen Paddock. Uh, and if you don't remember who that is, this is the if you watch Game of Thrones, he was the Kraken, uh, like the pirate that joined late in season six or seven, I think. Uh, and we also have Chin Ryu Ma, who is May. Uh, I won't give you too many details about her. And I'll also leave some of the other characters out because I think that'll be a little bit spoilery. Um, but look, uh, I went into this movie, ex movie expecting it not to be very good. Uh, and I want to say up until the halfway point of this film, I was actually pretty surprised at how much I was enjoying the film. I was, you know, I was being very entertained. There's a lot of really interesting visuals. Uh, I think following... It's it's just uh, interesting to see Jackie Chan like still be in the in a role like this when you know like he is he's a little bit older he's he's definitely not doing as much as he used to when it comes to stunts but they managed to you know um, they managed to make it look like he was really doing a lot of the stuff uh, so it it was really interesting I also didn't know anything about this film uh, but yeah Jackie Chan is now sixty nine years old. Uh, so he's definitely not as spry as, you know, some of his other action films. That, not to say that I think he still has a lot of the comedic chops that I enjoy from movies like Rush Hour. Uh, and as much as they wanted to partner him up with John Cena as this, like, uh, to recapture some of that magic of, like, the the odd couple of, like, you know, like the, the partners kind of taking on, like, reluctant partners taking on a mission. Um I don't know that it fully worked. I think it's fun to see both of them on screen, especially if you're a wrestling fan or, or a, a fan of action movies. Uh, you know, there are two people that have been around doing it for a long time. Uh, like I said, the movie has some really cool visuals. I think has some really interesting action scenes. Uh, and, and overall, like, the idea of the movie is still pretty fun. Like, this big heist, we're trying to stop this heist. But then the film just takes some detours that really didn't make a lot of sense. For you to like, it feels like they were really beating it into your head that both John Cena and Jackie Chan are are the good guys, and you're supposed to root for them. Uh, taking it to very silly extremes, I think some people might find that endearing. I didn't really care for it. Uh, and then by the by the third act, when everything was supposed to be wrapping up, I had kind of lost interest in what was going to happen. Uh, it wasn't until actually the credits when we saw some of the bloopers, which I love watching bloopers in, in Jackie Chan movies um, like that. That's when I really was like, oh, OK, this movie's finally over. Uh, I think it's a little bit too long. Uh, like I said, there's that detour in the middle that really derails all of the momentum that had been gained from the beginning, uh, because even then, like I put aside a lot of um, like, oh, this this how are they doing it? Like there's a sequence where uh, there's a sandstorm that is man-made and i don't know that seemed like a very weird 
convoluted idea but even then like i put all the that aside right i wasn't penalizing the movie for doing silly stuff like that it was more of like them just beating over the head like oh john cena's a good guy remember he's a good guy he's doing this stuff for like because he's a good guy even though he started out as this like mercenary he's doing it for good reasons uh i think the film just uh they they really brought that point home whereas i feel like they should have left it up to the audience to determine that oh yeah he is a good guy he is doing this for good reasons right we didn't need him doing all these silly things and hanging out with kids and playing around with them um but i think jackie chan and john cena do have some fun chemistry at some points uh i think whenever they have confrontations with each other those are probably their best moments uh and like i said the the fight choreography is really well done specifically having a you know a gigantic man uh of john cena's stature fight against jackie chan who is smaller like he is just a smaller opponent uh but they find really creative ways to kind of even out the fight uh so it it's oh it, it's really entertaining like i said i think if this is something you want to have on the background and just kind of pay attention through those big spots uh that's how i would recommend watching this film um i don't want to penalize it too much because i feel like this is they at least knew what they were trying to do with this film, right? I think it's in I think everything that's happening is intentional. It just didn't really connect with me, or at least it lost me along the way, right? I really liked what they proposed to me in the first half of the movie, but then once they changed that proposition, I was not as fully on board. Uh, but I mean, it, this is a very predictable plot, very straight and simple. Uh, I think the Pillow Asbe as the villain, Owen Paddock. Um, I think he has a really fun performance and this movie kind of really devolves like almost into like a Mad Max Fury Road type of like uh, aesthetic at, towards the end of the film, which I found really, really interesting. Um, so, yeah, uh, there's not a lot of other performances that are uh, outstanding or that just kind of mention. Uh, I think the movie tries to get to these characters to give you a little bit of their backstories to uh, maybe have you connect or or have a, a little bit of like tug at the heartstrings. Uh, but I don't know that it succeeds in that. So, uh, yeah, this just feels like something they ended up dumping on a streamer, uh, which is kind of how I watched it. So uh, overall, uh, I'm not mad I watched this film. I think, like I said, for the most part, I was entertained uh, and it gave me something to talk about and put some content out on the channel. So, uh, you know, so. Uh, but there you have it. It is what it is. Uh, if you've seen this film, let me know what you thought about it down in the comments. As always, thanks for watching. Everyone remember to share, like, subscribe, hit the bell so you know when we go live. That is most Saturdays, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Stay tuned. We have more comic reviews, trailer reactions, TV recaps, all that fun stuff in the channel. As always, thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye.